So welcome back to another Q&A video here on the Back 40 Firewood channel. Um, if this is your first time watching a Q&A video, what happens is I pick out the comments from the last Q&A video and I answer them in this video. So if you have a question that you would like to ask me, um, leave a comment down below in this video. And then on my next Q&A video, I may just pick out your comment and answer your question. Um, I just I do this every now and then just to kind of give more of a, uh, I guess, not so chaotic format uh, compared to the live streams where I may or may not, usually it's the may not get to your questions on the live stream. So this is just an opportunity um, for you to, if you have any questions, ask them, leave it in the comments. And then, like I said, I uh, will pick a few out and answer them. So speaking of answering the comments from the last Q&A video, let's get right into it. So I have a little footage here from one of the uh, the stacking videos that we, we recently did. Um, so you get to be entertained by some stacking in the background. <laughs> so our first question is from Stan Nelson, who says he needs to try a little bit harder to hopefully get his question answered, even though I did answer your question about Obi-Wan Kenobi. But his question is, is a full out blooper video coming? Um, possibly. The problem I have with that is, um, I don't usually keep a lot of footage, like raw footage, on my uh, computer at once because um, the file sizes are so large. So, like, I only have like two or three videos that I'm working on uh, on my hard drive, and then when I'm done with those videos, I delete all of the footage. So, if I don't save the bloopers, um, I, I just don't have the footage anymore, but maybe I'll start putting a little something together and saving those just for you, Stan. But I also think there's a lot of people that do enjoy those. So yes, perhaps in the future you can be on the lookout for a bloopers video. I almost had a blooper right there. <laughs> All right. And on to our good friend, WD30, Will Davidson. Here's a question for the Q&A video. When did you realize you had some what started a community here on YouTube. Then said, okay, now let's get the fire going and just talk about whatever and have a good time. Have a great time together. Thank you for uh, making the community a great place to come and be a part of. Um, well, thank you, Will. Appreciate that. Um, I think when, I think it just all starts with your mindset from the very beginning when you start a YouTube channel. I think a lot of people out there are, they start a YouTube channel and they say, what is this YouTube channel going to do for me? Like, how is it going to benefit me? And I've kind of taken the approach where I kind of want to have more of like the mindset of what can my YouTube channel have as an impact on those who are watching? So if you think about like the Friday night live streams and my videos, um, generally my videos are entertainment purposes only. And the live streams are kind of a, just a place for everybody to come together. And I think having that mindset of like what I can bring and have an impact on others, I think that's the, the key ingredient that sometimes is missing. And it probably goes back to the days of uh, back in the wrestling, the entertainment, the sports entertainment world, because um, the two rules you always had when you went out in the ring was when you get when you're done and you walk back through the curtain, you make sure that everyone was safe and everyone didn't get hurt. Nobody got hurt and that everyone left happy. So all those in attendance, did you put on a good show? Did you do what you needed to, to make the people in the audience happy? It wasn't about, you know, you, it was about the people watching. So I think that's kind of like the mindset I took into YouTube is that I wasn't, I wanted to focus on what kind of an impact I could have on you watching right here and you tuning in to the live streams and you being, uh, feeling like you are a part of the channel. I think that's the key to building a great community here on YouTube. So thanks for that question, Will. Now on to Tim Thompson, who has a question. What advice could you give someone to, or give me starting my own YouTube channel? So just what I just said right there is some advice. The other advice I would tell you is that um, 
you have to just find out what works for you. Um, and a big part of that is just having the self-awareness to know like how much time you can spend on making a video. How much time can you spend on YouTube? How much time do you have each day or each week? You know, is it one video a month? Is it one video a week? You have to find that balance and then you have to go after it. Like, and the other thing is, I mean, I think a lot of people start and, or I think one thing that holds people back from starting is the fear of not being able to keep up with her, not being able to do a video, you know, as often as they'd like. And honestly, like just start. And if you only get one video done and then you'd have to take a month or two off, like that's no big deal. Like I think too many people are afraid of failure to the point of they don't even attempt or they don't even start. I mean, I think, I think failing is great because that's how you really learn. So, you know, maybe you try it one way that didn't work. Now you just adjust, make a new game plan and have that self-awareness to figure out what is going to work for you because every channel is different, just like every person is different. So what works for you might not work for me. What works for me isn't probably going to work for you, but that would be my, I guess, quick rundown on advice. Maybe I'll do a video sometime about starting a YouTube channel. We'll see. Lynn, is there a good reason for not burning whole blocks? Viewing from East Central Alberta. All right, well, um, I would say the one reason for me, my mindset, my thought process is I very seldom will split a round, a big block, and find that it's completely dry on the inside. So by burning full rounds, by burning wood that's not split, you really aren't, I guess, burning as efficiently as you could. Um, I know a lot of people say wood will dry out just sitting in log form, but I'm here to tell you, I've split many logs open that I've sat for many years, and inside, they are still wet. So split the wood, give it a chance to season, and it will burn more efficiently. And I think that's what you all... I think that's what we all should be trying to do in the end is burn wood as efficiently as we can. Uh, so that's the reason why I don't burn full blocks or big rounds. Jake, what effect will energy prices have on the demand for firewood? I think they will have a huge uh, impact on the demand. Now, the question is, Will people be raising their prices of firewood to the point where it's not going to be, it's going to be a, a balance of, or, you know, it's going to cost the same to either burn propane or I can buy firewood. Like if that, if the demand goes up and the price goes up, then that might keep, you know, people from buying firewood. But I've seen a lot of things out there stating about, you know, like just reading things, how there's going to be more and more people in the firewood market this year, just because um, they're going to be supplementing supplementing wood in for like heating. Where like last year they maybe burned, you know, two months out of the whole season, and maybe this year they're going to burn four months. So that's going to add more demand on the supply. Um, I also think there's a lot of new people that are going to be first time burners, um, and I think a lot of people are going to possibly hold out. You know, they might have a wood stove, but they're going to turn on their furnace and then they're going to get their first bill after the first cold month. And they're going to see how high that bill has gone up and they're going to start turning on. They're going to start burning in the wood stove. So Ed Jackson, do you find the four way wedge works OK just sitting on the ram without the pin? Um, yeah, so I do. However, um, I'm pretty sure Chris at Wolf Ridge would not recommend that. Uh, I just find uh, that I don't have much trouble unless I get some pretty snarly wood. Sometimes um, it'll push that wedge up. The other thing I do is I always take a quick look at the piece of wood before I put it through the splitter. And I see if that back of the round, if it's got any angle to it. Because, you know, if it's got an angle back towards the push plate... When that push plate hits it, it's going to pop the front end up and then that's going to cause the wedge to go up. So if you just get in a habit of always making sure if your back of your round isn't 
perfectly straight up and down to always have, you know, the longer part of it near the bottom. So that push plate can hit that first and then push it into, uh, into the wedge. Um, sometimes I'll see, I'll find that if there's a couple pieces, um, sitting on the table that, uh, they can kind of like the piece coming through can hit that piece and then like kind of ride up. So like that sometimes happens, but for the most part, you just got to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, you know, and you can, you can, if you have a piece that you, you know, if you know what to look for, you can see that you're going to have a problem with it riding up and pushing that four way up. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I haven't had, uh, I haven't had much trouble. So like I said, though, it's probably not recommended. Try it out. See how it goes. Pay attention to the little things and you should be fine. But that's not me saying, that's not me with like a disclaimer saying, yes, do it. Pyroman 6000, a two-parter. How hard is it really to learn how to sharpen a chainsaw? And how badly am I likely to muck it up the first couple of times? I bought one of those kits, structure supply cells. I got my saw, but it hasn't really needed a touch up until now. I've hit the dirt a few times and is and was struggling. Um, it's been a good saw so far. Okay. So my advice would be to buy a two in one sharpener. If you don't know what a two in one sharpener is, look it up online. Um, it's got the, it's got the file and it's got a, a file for the raker and it has a gauge that sits in the teeth and it also has the angle for sharpening. The two-in-one sharpener is what I started out using and it's helped me tremendously, um, both just in my confidence and then trying to go the next level up to just hand filing without the two-in-one. I've gotten somewhat decent at hand filing, but I'm not that good. I would, I'm much, I'm much more confident in the two-in-one uh, for sharpening a chain. Just because, like I said, it's got that guide um, you can put it right on there and you can, it's got little arrows on which way to go, which way to push. Um, and it rides on the teeth. So to me, that would be my advice. Now, I don't know what you mean by one of those kits. I don't know if you bought like one of those little, um, sharpening kits with like just the, the, the file with like the little gauge on it and the lines that kind of show you the angle. Um, but I would really look into a two-in-one sharpener uh, and just use that thing and you'll start developing uh, muscle memory of like the angle and you know how how to file it through and and you know get a nice edge on that tooth and the plot the, the added bonus is that when you're filing uh, and, and sharpening the tooth you also are taking the raker down so to me the two-in-one is awesome. I use it all the time. And um, so I know I've had a lot of people ask me like how I got get my chain to seem so sharp. And it's just using that two in one. I mean, it's just using it and using it properly. That's the best advice I guess I could give you <laughs> because it works for me. And I've, I've, I've been in your position. I struggled in the beginning. I at one point, I just like, I'd use a chain till it didn't cut very good. I'd take it off, I'd put a new one on. I'd had like five chains. I'd take three of them in to have sharpen at a local uh, hardware store. And then I, I saw that two in one. I bought one, I used it. I used it and used it and used it. And I got better with it, got better with it, got better with it. And then now I'm, I'm confident in my abilities with the two-in-one but you know like i said I'm, I'm starting to kind of transition over into uh learning how to just hand file because i think you can get a little better edge um with the with just hand filing but again i am by far no expert when it comes to that and i think someone else answered and replied to your comments so go back and check uh the last q a video 
But yeah, that is, uh, I think that's about it. I think we are done stacking back there in the background. So I think that is gonna wrap up this Q&A video. So for all you who left a comment in the last video, thank you for leaving them. If I didn't get to yours, I apologize. Like I said, I just, I pick out, you know, five, six, seven, eight of them and I answer those. But if there's something you really wanna know, jump on the live stream Friday night, 8 p.m. Central. Otherwise, leave a comment in this video and perhaps I will answer it on the next Q&A video. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Stay safe, have fun, and be cool.